it didn't really, you know, get in the way of anything. So I, I thought, you know, where it was located was good. It had that Jurassic Four setting. Uh, I, I thought it was, uh, you know, very well done, uh, as good as any dinosaur, you know, animatronic exhibit that you were going to find anywhere, really, you know, pretty much in the world. I mean, it was it was really good. Yeah. So. Um... So Jim Flugel actually made the comment, and you and I have talked about this, but Dinos at Night, I think it was Dinos After Dark was the name of the event. That was pretty fun. Did anybody here, let's do a show of hands. Who got to do Dinos After Dark? Any any takers? I did not. You guys didn't? Oh, it was uh, so but, fun. Like, Don, did well, you? Yeah, get question for Jim. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I was there every time we did that. But uh, for question for Jim, is, did you like it because of the experience going through with the dinosaurs? Or was it just about the s'mores that you got? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to put myself on camera here. Let's talk about the s'mores. There's something that bothered me about the s'mores. Of course it did. The s'mores were good. And they were actually probably some of the best s'mores you would ever have. Because they made them, as opposed to just like a piece of um, Hershey Kisses, kind of like, uh, you know, or not Hershey Kisses, but Hershey Bars, like they, you would normally have. They actually use like Reese Cups, if I recall, or something like that. But they would give you juice and s'mores. But they would give you juice while you're in line, and then you'd eat the s'more. And a s'more is the most mouth-drying food you can eat. So when you really <laughs> needed the juice, you didn't get the juice. You got the juice before you needed it. <laughs> So uh, I, 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 I digress, but yeah, it wasn't real well thought out about the, you know, what should come first with that, but no, you know, Jim's right though. I mean, it was a really good event. You know, everybody got those little lights that you would uh, use to go through uh, the exhibit, uh, but that, you know, it was just fun, you know, just something different to add to your day at Kings Island. Yeah. So next question is uh, from Holly Knoll. What shows are they having and who's going to be in them? Well, we can't really say who's going to be in them, but let's talk about the entertainment lineup. We did talk about uh, Bubbles already, but let's touch on to that because I feel like this is a situation where people are kind of coming and going. But I want to share the screen of um, Kings Island's uh, entertainment thing. Don, what show are you going to be in? What show am I going to be in? They'll be in Hot Blooded. <laughs> I'll be the one they kill off again. <laughs> again? Okay. So I'm ready to bring this up. Okay. So let's talk about the entertainment. So let's start at the top. So Country Crossroads, that is a new show. This is actually a picture, I believe, from either Cedar Point or Knott's. And you guys can drag me on this. But that's May 25th through August 11th. And that's going to be in the Fest House. Uh, all new show features the live country band and vocalists performing your favorite country hits of today and yesterday. So part of it is kind of like, oh, a country show. But the other part of it is kind of like the Fest House kind of got rebuilt under country shows. So it's kind of nice to to see that in a way. What are you guys' thoughts on the show? Anybody, any country fans out there? I am. I like country, but it's got to be like the older country. Like what okay. what is built as country right now? I don't really consider that country i agree with you chris yeah, yeah they, they say yesterday and today megan you were gonna say something i just agree with them i like the older like you know 70s 80s 90s country not this new stuff <laughs> well it yeah. says a mixture of old and new so hopefully it'll have some like good johnny cash and stuff this is yeah, the was country when country wasn't cool <laughs> you know gazillion bubbles and this picture looks amazing but uh, June 15th through July 7th, so super, super short um, uh, run for this thing. But mind-blowing show combines the beauty of bubble artistry, the wonders of soapy science, and the interactive musical fun for the whole family. With mesmerizing bubble magic, immersive lights and lasers, and high-energy music, a spellbound experience for all ages. So, like we kind of, I, I don't want to like, you know, beat a dead horse because you and, you know, we kind of talked about it, but it's 25 minutes of a dude blowing bubble, which is fine. And then five minutes of awesome lasers and bubbles and freak, all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, next up, Hi Fi Honey, aka the fan club that Nick Gaskins is, a, is the head of. <laughs> so, Hi Fi Honey, you know, they, they play, uh, uh, you know, covers and it's, April 20th, 27th, May 4th, 11th, 12th, 18th, 2024. 
and I'm sure that they'll be back for tricks and treats as well. They're uh, what the Fangtastics is that what they're called. Yeah, Fangtastics. Yeah. So Nick, you actually I see on Facebook that you go and like see them quite often, like at Miami Valley Gaming and stuff like that. What's their show like uh, outside of the park? So I've been personal friends with them for a couple of years now, and the show outside of the park is a little bit more energetic, so they have more time to play. So like at the one they just had a, this past week at Miami Valley, they played for was like three hours as opposed mm-hmm. to a, a 25-minute show. So you're getting more songs in there. They're a higher energy when they're outside the park just because of uh, the longer sets they can play and the more freedom they have on the songs that they can choose. Okay. Yeah, Awesome. Uh, so hi fi honey, nice people. Uh, you know, you got uh, Jessica, aka Holly Holiday, uh, is their lead singer, and she's I got to go on the other tab. That's this nice young lady here. Uh, nice lady, band's really good, uh, really good, uh, really good fit for King's Island. Uh, let's get back. So now we're going to retrospect. So, retrospect is a returning show. Uh, this high intensity interactive song and dance production features nonstop blend of favorite and current throwback party themes. That's on the International Street Bandstand, May 25th through August 11th. I wonder if this is going to have a live band because they did not mention that. I believe they did something similar uh, Cedar Point last year. I mean, that picture is from Cedar Point. Um, and I they did have a live band for that. Um, it's a, It's a good show. Yeah, well, they did. They had retrospect last year too. Am I am yeah. I correct about that? Yeah. So uh, it, probably the same performers and stuff. I mean, I I don't know, and I don't particularly look into that. But uh, they had a live band then. I'd love to see it again because the bandstand, as we've kind of discussed several times on the show, is the best venue when the sun goes down. Before the sun goes down, miserable. But <laughs> retrospect at night, starting at seven thirty or whatever, fantastic. All right. Next show. Um, River City. So River City, I honestly thought that they were Kings Island's band. I thought that Kings Island had assembled them because they played so often. Um, But they're going to be April 28th and May 5th. So um, they they were kind of the, the quintessential backup band. A lot of these people that you're seeing in the picture have performed at King's Island before. Uh, I see Paige. I see Jeremy Floor. Is, uh, she's been on there for a while. Uh, she, this woman was Jeff in... Excuse, Jeff, yeah, that's Jeff Smith's wife. But she was in uh, the Blitzen Band. Mm-hmm. And then Jeff Smith's over here. You know, and the rest of your River City. Uh, if you have a chance to see them, do it. I don't... Where are they performing? It doesn't say. Maybe it's a temporary stage. I know they had him in front of Chicken Shack at one point. Um, uh, Trailblazers Extreme. So, you know, obviously, this is a picture from Off the Rails, uh, June 22nd through April 4th. It's summer camp, and you haven't experienced one point like this. Actors, or sorry, acrobats, aerialists, and extreme athletes come together for the ultimate campground uh, adventure featuring extraordinary high flying feats of courage. So, the real question is, are they going to have dancers and singers and stuff like that in this? I guess we don't know yet. <laughs> I think with the camp Snoopy, you know, being new this year and kind of being integrated a little bit into the show, I think it's going to be really good. I think so too. I've got a lot of hope for it. Um, all right. And then under the stars, and this one is the one that everyone's always asking me about May 24th through September 1st. As the sun goes down, the sky lights up under the stars at Kings Island nighttime spectacular. Uh, fireworks, hundreds of drones, and laser protections combined to celebrate an unforgettable uh, memories from your King's Island visit. Um, that's you know, obviously when the park closes at ten or later, and it's weather permitting. But um, I'm not—I don't want to use people's names on this show. But I will tell you that uh, the person that is the uh, producer of the show is very ambitious. I've known them since they were pretty young. And they they were talented then, and they're a million times more talented now. And knowing that they were the one producing the show, I'm more excited than ever about this. I Probably. think you're going to see more with the drones with this show this year. Yeah, it's it's probably going to be nothing different from the past couple of years as far as drones and lasers and stuff. But you can make that argument about anything. 
what's on the stage, same as last year, people singing and dancing. Well, it, it's a different show, you know? Yeah, I think it's going to be amazing. The one thing yeah. I would like to see, though, is I would like to see the fountain coordinated, choreographed a little bit more with the show. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, there's the, that the the fountain is programmed internally, and sometimes it's moments of brilliance, but other times it's like you can't tell that it's synced up. But uh, I thought Fun Fireworks in Fifty was really cool with how it like lowered and raised almost. Yeah, you know, it's hard to describe and. But I remember I would pay specific attention to the fountain at points because the way that it's quote unquote danced was was really cool. But yeah, those are the shows this year. We were afraid for far worse, but this looks pretty exciting. So uh, I'm glad to see that. Um, all right. Uh, from Shunk's Adventures, what are your thoughts on Grain and Grill? Uh, let's start with you, Megan. What are your thoughts on Grain and Grill? Uh, we actually ate at the one at, I believe it was Carowinds, um, two summers ago. So we kind of knew what was coming. Uh, then the one in Kings Island opened, the, we ate the very first day, and it was just kind of all over. Like, there was a lot of mixed reviews because it seemed like portions were all over the place. But by the end of the year, that ended up being my go-to place to eat. It used to be Coney Barbecue, but it ended up being Grain and Grill. And I okay. love that you can take it out there and eat at the fountain, too. You, ma'am, have opened up a can of worms because I'm going to amend this question. <laughs> Josh, thoughts on Grain and Grill and what's your go-to restaurant at the park? <laughs> okay, well, if you know me, I'm a very, very picky person. So I'll be honest, I didn't either at all last year. Um, really? Yeah, just the food. Um, I don't know. I just – nothing on the menu intrigued me. Um but yeah, my, my go-to restaurant, that, that's hard. Are we talking about like sit-down or quick service? Okay. Uh, Chris Hughes, what's up? Um, I would have to go, well, with Grain and Grill, um, I had higher hopes for it um, compared to the one at King's Dominion. Um, that one, the, the options that they had were far more amazing than what King's Island had. Um, but I will say the pierogies, at King's Island, oh. top tier. <laughs> oh. Love the pierogies. I'll be uh, back. I'm gonna go eat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, would, I think my uh, go-to restaurant is changing. Um, I used to, you know, really like uh, Coney Barbecue or um, the Brew House, but Jukebox Junction, uh, their burgers are really good. Um, it was the first time I had it in years this past season, and I just absolutely loved it. The patty melt. That's yes. the most underrated burger there. I don't even like yeah. um what's the bread that it's on? Is it rye bread? Sourdough? It's, it's rye. a yeah. rye. It's it's yeah, a yeah, it's a, it's a oh, rye. Yeah, I didn't like the bread, but I was completely willing to go past that just for like the texture of the meat and stuff. Don grain and grill opinion and go to. I was very excited about grain and grill when the concept was first, you know discussed and then announced i was thinking the king's dominion menu which was outstanding yeah and it wasn't the same menu there wasn't a lot there that i like like josh i'm kind of a picky eater um the pierogies you know not my favorite thing but that was the best thing on the menu there for me not something if that menu remains the same for this year that i would uh, you know be frequenting at all. There's other places around the park that I would, would choose to eat. My go-to place would, is right now is the, the brew house. Uh, just love the food there. I've had, you know, many different um, things that's available there that's on the menu and everything has been really good that I've tried there. So I really like that. I will, you know, give a nod to Jukebox as well because uh, the burgers there, I mean, they're outstanding. I, I think you'd be hard pressed maybe to find a better burger in the industry than what you can find in jukebox. I mean, they're really good. I think that's the sleeper place in the park uh, to dine. You know, everybody goes to the other places. Nobody really talks about jukebox, but if you're interested in a burger, that's the place to go. Yeah. Nick. So grain and grill is a nice, uh, healthier option. You get a little smaller portions, but the food there, it's kind of hit or miss. I like the shrimp and the pierogies, which is kind of my favorite this past season. But go to is definitely the pub burger at Brew House. I just you can't beat that. Nice to sit down, air conditioning in there, and it's made to order. So I really enjoy that one. 
What about you, Ryan? My go-to is always the um, the the uh, grain and grill. Not. I, I like grain. I, no, I I don't like Park Skyline. I like Park La Rosa's better than outside of the park, but I don't really like in Park Skyline. I got to be in the mood for it. Grain and Grill's fine. Um, I also tried King's Dominions, and then I saw ours, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. They have half the menu up, and the menu just got smaller rather than bigger. But um, my go-to is uh, uh, the brew house in the pub burger. Um that's so, oh yeah, and it's you get the double burger, and then my girlfriend, you know, she's at the park with me almost every time I go. She thinks that the the two meat patties are too much, so she gives me one of hers. So I always get a triple pub burger, and that's why I'm in the shape I'm in right now. <laughs> oh man, uh, comment here. Case family vlogs. Hey, I need some onion rings. Most other Cedar Fair parks have them. Fact check correct. They need onion rings. Okay, Agreed. so th there isn't too much discussion with this, but this does bring up a thought. I understand why this is true, but it's let me. I, this is kind of directed towards, I guess, really any of you because you all visit a lot. But I love the the brew house as I just established. But I feel like I'm gonna die if I think about those uh, tater tots by like the time July rolls around because I eat them so often. I would love to have the option of just getting park fries instead of the, the tater tots. Curly fries. Oh, well, beggars can't be choosers, but yeah. <laughs> you can get fries so for anywhere, right? dollars more, you can upgrade to the onion rings. Yeah, can you? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're going to bring it back to this coming season, but the past couple seasons, it was like $1.99, and you got the onion rings. Well, the onion rings were an appetizer, too. They weren't like a side. Mm -hmm. So you got yeah. that big stack of them. No, you didn't but, get the big stack. It came out in like a small, like a little, like a like a deep, like you know, like a like a frying basket in a way. Like you're gonna drop fries in like a oil. Yeah. The, so it's like two bucks. You got a decent amount of onion rings, and for two dollars, you can't beat that. It's good. Uh, okay, awesome. Uh, so to back up your claim, we got Jim, the Mister Know It All. It says Brew House has onion rings, just enough <laughs> charge. So I guess that that backs it up. I'm gonna have to try that because, like, I'm not a huge onion ring guy, but sometimes, man, onion rings just hit the spot. They're awesome. Got to have the potato barrels though. You can't you can't go with the onion rings. It's got to be the potato barrels. Yeah, but when you eat 25 servings of them over the course of two months. Why yeah, not? you can't do them any. Well, I mean, any pizza is a personal pan pizza if you believe in your. But uh, so, Holly Knoll said, "I'm watching Retrospect on YouTube. Do you guys like Retrospect?" Um, I loved Retrospect. Megan, Retrospect. Did you watch it? Did you like it last year? Nope, never seen it. So you hated it. <laughs> never seen it. Well, I was new to the park in 2019, and it wasn't there when we were there. I don't believe. Yeah, Retrospect, I think, came... I mean, they had similar shows for years, but Retrospect, I believe, came last year. Uh, Josh, do you, Josh, do you watch the shows very often? Uh, I did not watch that show. Um, no, because usually when I go, it's after work. I go up with the family, let the kids do a few things, eat dinner, and go home. <laughs> All right. Um, Chris, Retrospect. No, I... I didn't watch uh, Retrospect at Kings Island. Saw it at Cedar Point. Liked it at Cedar Point. Uh, might have to do it this year at Kings Island. Yeah. Don? That's solid. I enjoyed the show. Yeah, me too. Uh, I I liked... Uh, I, uh, the bandstand at night is fine. During the day, it's terrible. And they're figuring that out, and they're not doing anything on the bandstand during the day. And normally, I would use that as a critique, but I, I think it's the best possible decision. Um, but, uh, let's move along. So we got uh theme park plunge again. So being gluten free, I'm grateful that most Cedar Fair parks, I can find food. A lot of six flags is a no go. I think that I, I, this isn't a question, but I want to highlight it because like, I, I always thought the gluten free people were like the hipsters or like, that was like a health thing. But then I started working with somebody with celiac disease and I saw her accidentally eat gluten one time and how sick she got from it. So now I, I think it's awesome because I, I think it's um, – isn't it the Potato Works that's the glu certified gluten-free where they don't have it anywhere? I think that's awesome that they have that. Now, granted, like 
there's a lot of places where you're just not going to be able to to go. But having that option there is is pretty cool. What are you guys' thoughts on that? I think they need to make it easier for the guests to know where those locations are. Uh, you have mm -hmm. to sometimes dig pretty hard through the app or through the website to find that information. Now it might be improved this year. I haven't looked, you know, at it that closely, but that was one of the things that I would hear a lot from guests is that, you know, there's just not a lot of awareness on where it is. And I spend a lot of part of my day just trying to figure out where I can eat. Yeah. And I, I think it should be extended too, because the, um, uh, like I, I think that not just that, but like, you know, there's vegetarian and vegan options and so on for, for people with that. But, you know, there's a lot of people that are like diabetics and stuff. And it would be awesome if they had something on the app that would be like, this is what is probably safe for you. You know, like it, that, it's a little tougher because gluten free is it's a straight line. Is this gluten free or is it not? And then but, you know, with the diabetic, it's it's different or with somebody with other needs. It's it's kind of a balance. But I think that that would be kind of kind of neat. But. Let's move on a little bit. So what's new for 2024 is Camp Snoopy. And one of our esteemed colleagues here, Josh, actually got a tour of Camp Snoopy on Sunday and uh, put up an article on his website. And I'm going to get that pulled up here in a second. But um, Josh, can you start talking about what you saw when you went on the tour? Oh, let's see. Where shall I start? <laughs> um, well, first off, um, it's always you know a pleasure to see that stuff because you know growing up with the park and i'm always like oh like back then i'm like i wonder how these people like get to do that stuff or you know it's usually like the the news channels and whatnot um yeah. so when you know when they reached out you know i couldn't say no um so we got there you know um safety first handed out hard hats and then as we walked back we walked through um right where surf dog was and then we went past um right about where snoopy's space buggies were and we stopped right there and then from there on they just kind of explained what we we're going to be doing um and then you know don't take your hard hats off watch where you're stepping you know all the safety stuff first um so first we got to see the um uh pig pins hall pig pin it's mess hall is that the name of it yeah I think pig pens it. mess hall yeah yeah pig pens mess hall um when we were there they're actually finishing the structure of it um it's it's nowhere near being completed um and then questions were asked like is it click service is it dine in so the way under i understood it's pretty much like um how snoopy's uh, grill i think it's called it is so we you just wait in a little you know switch backs so you go up get your food and then he said there will be um seats all around um you know so it'll be there will be seating so it's just a quick service um then they talked a little bit about um underneath the shelter like the new kids play area um there's going to be meet and greet and then they said what's new for this year and um Quote me if I'm wrong, Don, uh, but they said for the first time in park history, they will be having the Snoopy's characters dressed to a theme. So you only get to see like Charlie Brown and Linus and Lucy like wearing Camp Snoopy um, clothes. And so that'll be only over there where you can see that experience. Um and then after that, uh, obviously what we were all there for was to see Snoopy's soapbox racers. Uh, we got to go up, we stood underneath, um, I think they said it was one of, uh, it was the support that you saw my, my photo there on the very top. Um, yeah, this so one. At, yeah, so at, everyone took their turn there to take a photo. Um, and after that, we worked our way, um, we were, they showed us where the queue line, where it's going to be. Um, it's pretty small. I'd say it's about the size of, um. Maybe the second holding house for Beast, like the one close to the exit, maybe like that, probably about the size of that. Um, so that's where the switchbacks will be. They said, you know, they'll have like the, the fun TV and the fans, the misters and all that stuff to keep it cool. And after that, we worked our way up the exit um, ramp. So the handicap accessible. So that's all going to be like one thing. It's not going to have an elevator. Um, we got to see uh, the station. To me, the station is very like the, the roof is very, very low. Um, 
like I, I could reach up and touch it. But what is a cool element is uh, the track goes right over the exit, so you could reach up and touch the track. So I asked so you guys gonna put a net there or something, and they they were unsure. But um, it, um, the station was pretty cool to see. Um, and then after that, we worked our way down. We got to walk underneath the lift, and then we got to. Uh, see the control room. So I believe the PLC room. Um, there are some blueprints laying around there, a couple of air compressors, um, all the computers. It was pretty cool to see. You can only fit like three, four people in there at a time. I, I don't think I'm posting a picture of that. Um, no. But yeah, um, and after that, um, we worked our way over to um, what's it called? It's called it's an air, it's Woodstock's air rail now. Yeah, we kind of walked along the back side of that, and they are uh, as we were walking along the back side of the station, they are actually um, repainting the log flume for this year. Uh, it's like the Eiffel Tower color. I don't know if they had leftover paint, but that's that's the color that they're painting it. Um, it's not done yet. Uh, they said it'd be done in a couple of days, but like the whole back half isn't even done. So um, yeah, so that we worked our way underneath. Um, <sighs> Woodstock's air rail, and we just kind of all huddled there. Um, what's new for this year is uh, air stocks. If you scroll down, uh, keep going down, 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 down. <laughs> A couple more. That one, that, that building right there. So that is going to be a fun picks location. So that's going to be the fun picks for um, Snoopy Soapbox Racers, and that's going to be the fun. They're adding cameras to Air Stop, or Woodstock's Air Rail. Uh, so that will be the first of that ride's history. Um, and then to the right will be the cameras, and they sit to the left. They're going to have some new uh, merchandise, um, some new um, Squishmallows, like themed Camp Snoopy. So that's all going to take place right there, and they're going to sell the driver's license there. That uh, that, that way Nick can get his updated. <laughs> um, nice. but yeah, uh, so that, that's pretty much um, all in that area, and then right by um, uh, like the entrance where the bathrooms are, uh, that's going to be the uh, entrance sign. So they they took that out. It's going to be a gigantic circle with stained concrete. Um, and as soon as you enter there, uh, that that's that's going to be uh, Camp Snoopy. So um, I'm pretty excited I'm to find the photo. Now, Josh, this is uh, looking at this first photo here. That's the train out on the track. Did they test it for you? No, uh, that was sitting there. Um, of course, I, I had to be the one to ask. Did you guys test it yet? And they said no, but it's weird because in the video they posted when they revealed the train, you could see it going up the hill. And then, I mean, I don't know. Uh, they said they did not have a, they have not had a successful test run yet. So I don't know if that means like is stuff not working right or did they, 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 did they just say uh, they didn't test it yet? I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, I always enjoy seeing this stuff so I can compare it afterwards. But uh, me personally, um, I have a three-year-old son, three-and-a-half-year-old, and he's going to love this area. It's going to be something that we can just go let him play while we eat and relax. And it's, it, I feel like it's going to be a good addition to the park. I, I Josh, just have a question. Question. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Ryan. No, no, I'm just saying that I, I, think, I think that it, it looks great. But, Don, go ahead. I apologize. Did anyone ask how can you have, you know, you announce in mid-August a coaster that's over 5,000 feet long and it's ready to go in April, and this one's 768 feet, and it's not going to be ready to go in April? <laughs> anyone ask that question? Actually, no one asked, like, why, like, it's not going to be ready on time. Um, he he just kept saying uh, they're working around the clock, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get it open as soon as we can. But the question, uh, one of the ACE members there asked, will it be open for the ACE event? And, of course, the standard, you know, we don't know an opening day yet. We are hoping for late spring. Um, but to me, like May, like that's like summer, right? Um but they, they said they hope to have it open, but there's still a lot of work. But for, for being 80 degrees on a Sunday, like there was only like, I probably saw like four people there working. Um, there was one per two people working on the uh, mess hall. Um, and then there was one guy taking down the race for your life, Charlie Brown and repainting that to um, this new theme. And there were a couple of people painting um, the water trough of the log flume. 
But I mean, again, the, the construction workers might not work on the weekend, but for being what was it, like 83 and sunny, like to me, that place should have been filled. <laughs> and there's been a pretty mild winter too. I mean, it hasn't been yeah. that bad. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I personally think it's going to be, it's obviously going to be June, um, but it, it, it's a mess. It was a very, um, I know it's a construction site, but from previous construction sites I've seen, it's a very messy construction site. Um, just stuff laying everywhere. The fence wasn't done. Um, it's like they, they had easy things done first versus like, you know, something else that was just laying on the ground. I, I don't know. But like, I think once it's all put together, um, I was kind of looking at the renderings after I actually saw it in person. And uh, just tr trying to piece things together, and I, I really hope it looks like the renderings. Um, someone did ask if they're going to have like um, props throughout the area, and they said they are going to have like 3D statues, like Charlie Brown and everyone like throughout um, Camp Snoopy. So, I mean, if that comes to, I guess if that's within the budget, then um, it'll look pretty good. Yeah, sometimes yeah. things look like a disaster, you know, <laughs> so much to be done. Adventure Port was that way. Yeah. You know? uh, but it, it it comes together pretty quickly, really, yeah. when you're talking about construction. So while it might look like it's, you know, a long, long way to go, yeah. uh, it, it, it'll get done quicker than you think probably. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a couple of thoughts with that. First of all, I, I I don't know this. So for the love of God, do not base any purchasing decisions based on this but i've got a feeling that they're going to try to have it ready for the ace event but mm -hmm. i don't think plan i don't think camp snoopy's going to be ready that i mean that soft play that they're going to install hasn't been started yet this don't take a long time but nothing's on site um so i the problem they may run into is very similar for adventure port where if you open eh, let's open the coaster and then you get a little trickle of interest and then we'll open the soft play get a little triple trickle of interest and then Pig Pen's mess hall opens in late June or mid June, and, and then at that point, it's you never had that. Shab oh, Camp Snoopy's open. You had like a, just a little taste here and there, and that's why Adventure Port never really made any waves because it was just a little bit at a time. Yeah, so they did say that uh, Woodstock's air rail will open, but it will not obviously have the photos. So I mean, looking at it, there was so much of concrete that needs poured. But they said it'll be open on Friday. I, I, I mean, like I said, it gets done quick. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm, I'm hoping it's open because you know I'd like to ride it. Like, but the new paint, the paint looks amazing. Um, it, I actually like it better than the orange and yellow that was on there. It, yeah, it, it looked good, good from the pictures I saw of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna bring uh, bring this comment in before I lose it. But Mike Stribble said, "Isn't it due to something with contract with Holiday World?" due to them saying theirs is first. Well, we, t we had Leah Cook on the Attractions Group podcast, and we did ask her about that, because they mentioned kind of offhand that they were assured by Vacoma that they were going to be the first uh, Vacoma family boomerang to open in the United States. And she didn't specifically say that there was a contract or this was their agreement. She just said that essentially they looked at the schedules and they said, don't worry, you're going to be first, just based on the, the scheduling and stuff. So... How long are you guys willing to wait for when it opens? Megan, what about you? Would you wait an hour for this on opening day? Or when it opens, not opening um, day? I mean, I have fast lane. So if they have fast lane, hopefully they would get a little sooner. But I, I, even though Ryan, I didn't write opening day. I waited a little while. I mean, I don't have to write it the first day it's open. I don't mind waiting. Yeah. So Josh, you got kids. They'll love this. I will kind be of, there um, as soon as it opens. <laughs> the fatherly sacrifice you're going to make. Yeah. Chris? I've got an all-season fast lane, so I'm not going to wait an hour. I'll wait, you know, maybe once or twice and fast lane for it, but I'm not, like, beating down the door to go ride it. Yeah, it will have fast lane, I believe. I think it's listed. Uh, Nick? I'll wait maybe 10, 15 minutes for it in the fast lane, but beyond that, I'm not going to stand in line for an hour for – that kind of ride but it looks great don't get me wrong it's just i'd rather do like mystic timbers or ryan or banshee this kind right of ride. and and, and to, to be clear for those of you i'm sure we'll put the audio version up this week none of these people are within the demographic of what they're really aiming for with this and this is just more of a fun <laughs> question because we got grown men and women asking them like how long will you wait for this kids coaster don what are your thoughts like 
like how long would you wait for this without fast lane since all these guys without are fast lane? <laughs> you know, maybe thirty minutes. I think. Uh, you know, it, it's like is it not <laughs> anywhere close to being the longest, fastest, tallest, anything like that? But it looks fun. You know, it's adorable. So yeah, I would wait up to thirty minutes for it. Awesome. Cool. Well, it looks like things are winding down a little bit as far as like the comments and, and so on. So if anybody has any uh, last minute, uh, last minute comments or questions that you want us to have, then um, we'll love to address them for you. But other than that, it sounds like we're pretty much wrapping up. Um, so uh, one last thing from Jim, he said, I believe they will have it ready for the ACE event and open to the public Memorial Day as scheduled for early, it's scheduled for early rides on June 1st. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess we couldn't hit that. Sorry, yeah, sorry. I was going to say, so someone did ask that. Um, they asked, well, it's on June's early ride time. Is, is it going to be ready? And, you know, as it says, rides are subject to change. So um, you know, I guess we'll, we'll find out. So – Josh, and I, I do not want to put you in a position where you're speaking for anyone, but are you, based on what you heard, do you think that they have doubts that it's going to be ready for June? I mean, yet, yes and no. Um, I mean, they're, they're very confident, like you said, everyone's working every all day, every day. Um, and... Just from what I'm seeing, I don't think it'll be ready. I, I'm, I'm thinking like maybe like Father's Day weekend, like may, maybe they push it like, hey, Memorial Day's done, come by, you know, let's bring it out for um, Father's Day week, you know, and then just have it open for Father's Day. I don't know. But like Don said, like it's crazy how like construction sites can turn in a couple of days and how quick they can get stuff done. So, I mean, I, I, I could be completely wrong. Um, it's just from what I'm seeing uh, that is not completed. Um, like they said, they were like uh, like the, the 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 turf. The turf is the last stuff that um, they have to put on because you know you can't drive the construction vehicles on the turf. But everything is kind of landscape, so it's weird seeing like the little hills like where the turf will be. Um, but as far as that, uh, I just. I'm thinking mid June, but again, I, I could be completely wrong. I'm hoping earlier, but who knows? Yeah, we're we're all rooting for it to open, and hopefully, for the sake of the Ace event, that that would be a really good surprise for them. Yeah, uh, this is going to be the last question we take. Uh, how do you? Uh, this is from Henry. How do you think the crowd flow will be in Planet Snoopy before Camp Snoopy opens? Now, Josh, obviously, what you saw is going to be substantially different from what we see on Friday. But do you think that there's going to be congestion issues? Um, I actually do not uh, know. So right in between the log flume and um, Wood, uh, not Woodstock, um, Snoopy Soapbox Racers, I think that's going to be the tightest spot, which is the exit. But other than that, the, the plaza, everything is actually very open. Um, so I, I don't think there's going to be crowd issues at all. Um, I think the most crowded spot will be like the, the play area uh, because that's – Kings Island's never had a play area. Um, when I took my son, to, we went to Carowinds last year, and he played on theirs, and he loved it. Um, so I really think that that's going to be a big hit um, for them to go in the right direction to start, you know, winning this golden ticket back back again. Well, hopefully so. All right, hey Chris, Nick, Josh, Megan, thank you so much. Let's do this again. Let's do this sometime midsummer. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's let's follow yeah. up after the park goes daily and all the shows are open. We'll talk about what we've seen. This has been great. Thank you all. This this was far more successful than I ever imagined. More people viewing, more questions than I ever imagined. Um, so thank you everybody for involved. Hey, I'm Ryan Sir, along with Don Helvig, Josh, Megan, Nick, and Chris, and this is the first ever live Tower Topics. Good night, everybody. Oh.